Hello, it's David Willey here again, the curator from the Tank Museum with another film review. Uh, and I'm reviewing films that we're selling the DVDs in our shop that you can follow online. And if you want to order it, please do. As I've mentioned before, we are an independent charity. If you buy things from our shop, that really does help us because it keeps us going, especially through the times we're going through at the moment. Um, so this review, I'm just going to talk about the film The Fury. And uh, talking of that one, of course, we are very involved in that film, or we were very involved in that film from the point of view of it's a film that was made in 2013, released in 2014. It's got our Tiger 131 appears in it. Uh, the, the lead tank, the Fury, is, is actually our Sherman M4 that's in there. Um, and we actually supplied some other vehicles around the place. We had crew up there. We had all sorts of things going on at the same time. So we were um, involved quite a bit with the actual production of that film. And I don't want to go on too much about what it was like on set and some of the production issues because we're going to do a separate little film showing some of what we took where we were up there, the behind the scenes, some of the issues, what it was like on the set and using some of our footage. And uh, we'll do that as a slightly separate film in, in due course. Um, so what I'd almost like to try and do, even though I know I'm gonna drift off, is talk more about what do we think of that now? The film's out there, it's been out for quite some time. How does it fit in that bigger picture, the canon of war movies, and perhaps for us as well, our interest, and probably your interest, that idea of looking at uh, tanks in the movies. So where does it fit with that? Was it a good film? How did it come out? Now, um, we were very conscious of, I saw the whole script, I was uh, sent the whole script well in advance of the actual film being made. We met a number of the producers, we met the director, um, we later had the, uh, all the cast on, down to the Tank Museum, they had a look at things, they had a play with stuff and everything before uh, the shooting got going in uh, September. Um, they'd already done boot camp equivalents, they'd done all sorts of training beforehand, our guys, some of our staff went up there um, very early on. And one of the things that was very apparent was David Ayer, the director, he's a real military enthusiast, he collects uniforms, he's, he's great, great um, subject interest. His interest in authenticity led him to try and get the tiger from us, which we, we concurred with. Um, they came down, they, the, 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 the key vehicle, our Sherman was there, was taken. And uh, it's, Interesting because when you look at the film going to the end result, one of the things that come across is superb uh, cinematography. You know, the way it looks is quite stunning. The attention to detail in some of the uniforms, some of the equipment, um, that way the set was beautiful when we went up there. All of that type of thing, I think, really shows, and it's a credit to them because that comes across very, very well in the film. Um, but I mentioned the fact I looked at the whole script. What's interesting for me is when I first read the whole script and then you get to see the film, and I gather this happens on lots of films as well, the way it's cut really surprised me afterwards because there's elements in that were in the original script that I thought, once I'd cut it, I thought, well, how does that work? Because you don't get some of the things like the backstory. For example, the character War Daddy, played by Brad Pitt, um, all those burns on his back, that's actually part and parcel of the earlier, what we saw in the script, which is leading to this sense of responsibility and perhaps looking for redemption uh, of the Brad Pitt character. When all that was cut out, and yet you still see his burn back. Maybe everyone just assumes, oh, well, he must have been injured earlier in the war or something like that. Actually, there's a completely different backstory to that um, that was there in the original script. And I found that quite interesting because one of the things I was impressed by, which is underneath it, is on the original script version as well, and it does come out to a certain degree in the film, is that idea of when one's moment comes, Bible, the guy in there who quotes the Bible all the time, um, where he comes out with one of his lines about, here I am, Lord, send me, as in this is the moment where we have to step up, we step forward. Um, that also comes out in that wider script. And I, I felt somehow some of that was lost when we watched the original, but maybe you still pick up on that. Um, but in terms of looking at the film overall, 
I'm not going to be the first person to say this, but it looks stunning. It has so many modern effects in it. It's horrifying in a number of areas. The idea of the horror of war is portrayed in a much more graphic sense that we've been more used to, I think, since things like Saving Private Ryan. And yet underneath it is perhaps a 1940s or a 1950s war movie. Um, because in a sense of this top level of the the way it's portrayed as being very violent very accurate the horror etc and yet underneath it that end up bit of the story especially as we get towards the end you can't help but feel it's back to an Audie Murphy type movie of the 1950s where here they are the outpost type equivalent the fact they're stuck in that tank they decide to try and uh, heroically defend uh, or stop this German unit coming up the road and yet, and then we get to the bit that I know a lot of people, myself included, found a little bit questioning because after all that other parts of authenticity in the stories, and I'll, I'll mention a couple of those others where we might question it, um, but suddenly we get to that end bit where it suddenly seems like this SS unit that's coming up the road decide, you know, as opposed to what you think they might do as an experienced unit, which is just completely go around this tank, ignore it, who cares, let it sit there they suddenly decide, well, let's run ourselves at it like sheep and get mown down in vast numbers. Um, so that's a bit that I think many people found a little bit odd. Well, not odd, I suppose, but a little bit, uh, it seems sort of out of keeping with the rest of the film that seemed to be trying to go for some more authenticity earlier on. Um, at the same time, and again, so you can't help but therefore see, you know, the Brad Pitt as a John Wayne role and some of the way that, that certain pieces come across there. You can almost see that precedent in other war movies beforehand. But again, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. There, there, there's no real criticism there. Um, it was just that sense of one moment we thought we were watching one type of movie and yet and suddenly it came into a different type. Um, but uh, overall, going back to these things that sometimes, you know, we all have to remember if you're the tank fans and of course there's online there's huge numbers of sites blogs everything going on picking it all apart where they get it wrong all the time and everything else it's a film it is not a documentary that's one thing it's there to entertain and to uh, um, you know that's a hollywood movies agenda it's there to entertain and make money um, there's bits in there that i think they did very powerfully and very well some of the language is quite good in places some of that ironic, um, you know, about this this idea of the horror of through, but then a cheek by jowl with humour and uh, the bonding bit. I think the photography inside um, the tank again, without going too much about the production things, but they built this very clever set where they could move the cameras around and another half of this pretend tank would be taken away, so you could film the different bits from other angles. A lot of that does give a much better sense of the claustrophobia inside a tank and the sort of, you know, lack of visibility from inside to out. Some of the things in there, little nuances that when we met uh, on the set, lots of British Army soldiers who'd fought in Iraq, Afghanistan, they were playing extras and doing all sorts of things. There was lots of little detailing that these guys in the, in the, in the whether it was through the director or with the actors themselves, had picked up on. Uh, and there's a wonderful moment where that nervous waiting to fire the gun when they're trying to get the, the gun online and his foot shaking away and I had one of the guys there who was on the set as a gunner and he said that's exactly it that sense of you know you can't jump the gun but that tension going through your body as you're just waiting for that moment and there were some lovely little bits there which obviously they they'd uh, got some great research or some good advice on um, that certainly appears in there and there's other bits as well where there's criticisms of it. For example, the Tiger tank that sits at the bottom of the hill, why on earth would it move? The commander at the time, uh, who was the, the playing the actor, was a British tank commander, um, whom we happen to know quite well. And uh, he said, well, hang on, I'll just sit here and wait for those tanks to appear on the horizon and pick them off one at a time. I wouldn't move at all. Why, why should I do that and expose myself? The only justification I might just also remind you is if you were going for this authenticity, authenticity line all the time, um, which... Don't forget, one of the things we make the point is about a third of the German tanks late in the war were lost by their own crew, either because they were incompetent in the sense they didn't have enough training to get the best from that tank, or were nervous. And I've mentioned before on, a, on another video about Otto Carius mentioning, you know, with a whole Jagdtiger in a perfect sighted position, 
the commander then decided to move that vehicle because he was nervous of where the Americans who were advancing were, were, were moving to. And by doing so, completely negated his great fire position and lost the tank. And Carius was saying this was a, he was really angry about this because at this stage of the war, they were starting to not have the quality of the training of the, the quality of the men in the vehicles, however clever and superb we might think a German Tiger tank is. Well, actually, again, actually that action in the movie, we might criticize it as being untypical, but it was going on because, you know, actually there's evidence of that. So when we are criticizing these films, it, it, it's always, we're always wearing two different hats. We like it, you know, we've got to accept it. It's, it's Hollywood. At the same time, if you're a bit of a tank enthusiast, you can't help but uh, see moments in it where you're thinking, oh, are you sure that, would, that wouldn't happen or this one, whatever. Um, I think with a lot of these things, you have to go with the flow. And one of the points I just try and make for that yet again is is just this idea if you're gonna if you're interested in film if you're interested in war movies if you're interested in tanks which i imagine a lot of people watching this so they'll, they'll tick all those three boxes you ought to see the fury um, because it is another one of those moments where the tank film if you there is such a genre this one is certainly taking it forward um, in, a, in the way it's done so accurately, the, the, the nature of the story, where it's being portrayed, the quality of the cinematography. There was bits where we were on the set and there's this tracking shot we were part of there where the tiger comes up the hill. I was there, we were looking what's going on and afterwards the director kindly took us in the uh, editing tent and we saw this one shot. And one of the lines I said to him afterwards, I said, you, look, you'll do a three or four disc edition of this if you ever put it out on DVD. And one of those discs should just be all the footage you managed to take because on the set, seeing the tiger there, seeing the Shermans around the place, seeing all this and photographed so beautifully. And of course, when it's edited together, you're seeing seconds sometimes, but just this one tracking shot with shells going off, uh, all the effects going off as the tiger's coming up the hill, traversing its gun. It just looks stunning and seemed to go on for absolutely ages. And of course, it's cut into the film, so you don't have that sort of mouth-watering moment that we managed to have there of just seeing it um, manoeuvring in that way. And uh, But I'm doing what I said I shouldn't do, isn't it? Which is drift into some of the production things. So I would strongly recommend do watch it. Um, as I say, all these things are entertainment. They're Hollywood, they're everything else. Um, again, if you do get the film, I think the, the two discs version of the DVD were on it because um, you know we were talking about our involvement there we did a little exhibition afterwards and uh, as I mentioned we'll probably do at some point in the future a little bit film as well uh, on the behind the scenes as we saw it and some of the footage we took and uh, and what it was like there um, but certainly a film worth watching um, it did very well it came out I think it was October 2014 it cost about 60 to 80 million to make. Um, I think it certainly recouped, I thought the last figure I saw was something like about 250 million. It went over budget at the time as they were making it. Um, and that was all quite interesting. There was a bit of controversy during the making all the time. Anything to do with stars like Brad Pitt, you know, there's all the paparazzi around all the time trying to find stories to do on it. Um, I was really impressed by the way, uh, I've got not to stop it, I shouldn't be talking about this, but, but I was really impressed by the crew. Um, the quality of the filmmakers was just outstanding all uh, up there in Hertfordshire filmed at this airfield Bovington not Bovington and uh, but I I'll, we'll talk a little bit about that on that other film but uh, if you haven't got a copy on DVD or you want a copy on DVD follow the link and we're selling it in our shop and as I keep mentioning that really helps us if you buy it from us or any other products from our shop there that's great you get something to keep yourself occupied with and uh, at the same time, we as a charity means we get some money coming in, which as you can imagine is pretty important around now. And, uh, and do put your comments as well. We'll be interested to hear what you think of some of these things. So as ever, thank you again, and do keep watching and supporting us. We're still in this fight! We're still in this fight! Come on! We are a charity here at the Tank Museum, so if you can support us, please do. Consider joining our Patreon scheme or becoming a member of the Friends. Any donations will go directly towards the Tank Museum and its activities.